Hi, it's Park Madden from the Weather Store in Sandwich, Massachusetts. Today we're going to do a video how I restore and service and clean uh, a nice little barometer here. This is the finished project, but I'm going to take you through it as I show you the various steps that we do here at the Weather Store uh, to not only uh, service the barometers that we offer for sale, but offer also when people send us their barometers that need some work and cleaning. All right, so what I have here is a nice vintage, probably made in the early 20th century. It's marked Germany. It's a nice little aneroid barometer uh, with a case that has a lacquer finish on it. The dial here has a porcelain dial printed on there. It's marked G.F. Lindemar, Syracuse, New York. Uh, these were common as, you know, these were clearly made in Germany, but they uh, were often exported to the United States and local retailers or distributors would put their name on it. So first thing we need to do um, is get this cover off because um, I want to clean inside that glass and that's also going to give us access to the whole inside of the barometer. And I'm probably going to want to take this off here, this ring, because It'll make it easier for me to polish. And I can even, if I really want to, I could take these off too. And they um, are gonna have a little, probably a little nut on the inside. So here, I'm gonna show you how I get the lid off a barometer, this rim. So I'm gonna readjust the camera. And what I do is I bring it right up against my stomach here. What I do is I look for a little spot where the edge is, and I just put a, a little right there. And you see, by putting it against my, my stomach here, it cushions it. And I just kind of tap it like this. So it's moved a little bit. And then I go again. Yep, see, came off. So, now that that is off, I'm gonna reposition. Get these out of the way. So, this just came off in good shape. Then this here just lifts off. You can see that's dirty. I'm just gonna put this right here. And then, Look at the springiness, it needs a little adjustment on it. One of the first things I like to do is to pull this off. You gotta be careful doing this. You just kind of grab it and it comes right off. Okay, that one came off easily. And then this here, that comes off like that. And you can see we can now have access to the entire inside. And when I press it like this, that's one of the, see how this, by my pressing this, that's making this spring here move right in there. I can see, you can see that well enough. So what I want to do now, is I just want to put a little bit of oil on a couple little spots right here. So I'm gonna get my oil and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is the oil that I like to use. I've had this for a while, but this stuff doesn't go bad. It's called Super Lube by Cinco. And what I like to do is just put a couple little drops and a couple of key spots. All the basically, it's all the spots where they're moving parts. So I put a little drop right there. Let's get a little bit out. There. Put a little drop right there. Put a drop on here. Put a drop right there. And I get in here. Put a little drop in here. Anywhere it's moving. Now, this is the tricky one. I put a little drop. I like to get the under part of that bearing there. I just put a little drop in there. So what we've done now is we've now put a little lubrication on all the parts that are moving. And then you see what I do by, by pressing this up and down. I'm lubricating that in. I'm giving that a nice, nice motion there. So I've hit that one, that one, that one, that one. 
and then this spring. So, with that said, this is now essentially adjusted. You can also see when we put a screwdriver in here, we turn this, see how I'm turning it? It's making that move up and down, okay? And that there, well, I'm turning this right there, and that's putting pressure on this and making this whole thing go up and down. So, now we're gonna set this aside. All right, actually, what I wanna do first, though, I forgot. So I actually want to take this whole mechanism out of there because that will give me access to this nut right here, and that screw which it holds the ring on, and if I really want to, I could take the feet off. So it's pretty simple. You can see there are one, two, three screws in there, and once I take these out, like so. It's already starting to get loose. Oops, that's a little tricky. So, and then carefully. Oh, still a little bit in there. Just carefully lift this. It's still in there. There we go. So, this now just lifted out. Here are the screws. I'm gonna put this off to the side here with this and this and that other screw there. Oh, look, there's little, oh, there's spacers on it. Interesting. Okay. Um, hmm. Three spacers that go right on top of here. Interesting. Okay, so I think I'm probably, and I am gonna take these out. Sometimes you can do it either way. Just have to break the tension on it. One way or another. Okay, so this now takes this apart. And then I just need to get this off. Stand by. I'm just going to get a Okay, I'm back, and now I just have a nice little plier that I can grip this with. Just a little tricky. There it goes. Just didn't have quite the... Okay, so those are the parts. So this is now all stripped of its parts. I know where all these things are gonna go. That's gonna be the hole when the set screw goes through. This is gonna be my glass that I clean up. That might be one of the last things that I do that right there and here's the rim so now this is just polishing um, polishing on this uh, it does have some lacquer on it so I'm gonna make some quick work of polishing this and then we're gonna put this back together okay so now I've got some of my polishing equipment here out um, I like to use semi-chrome it cuts through really well into the brass or the or copper um, I think I'm going to need a little bit of steel wool because there's a little bit of a lacquer surface on there. I do put, I just get an old scrap piece of paper because I don't like to, to stain my uh, countertop here. And just a little bit of a cloth here to rub off. So what I like to do is I always start out, just put a little polish on here. Put a little bit right, right onto the steel wool. And then just kind of grab this, let's just start rubbing it in. And you can see, it's going to come up pretty quickly. Oh, look at that. So, you can see how quickly that's coming up. Now, I don't always use...
steel wool, but I am in this case because I know it's got that little bit of a lacquer on it, and this just helps cut right through it. If it weren't lacquered, I would not be using this because when you do use the steel wool, it actually leaves just a little bit of a matte finish on there. But this one just really, really needed it. You can see right there, there's some good tarnish in there that's gonna come up. Probably that's a spot where the lacquer had worn off. And there's a little, like a little ding in there. Right there, you can see that ding. Steel wool will help take that down a little bit. Won't remove it altogether, but. So you can see how nicely this is coming up right now. And just to show you how well this is working. See, I think you can see already how much better that's gonna look. So I'm gonna finish polishing this up. And when it's all done, you will, we'll start working on putting it back together. Now, you can see that I've got the case all polished. All right, case is all polished. Um, I did take these two little feet off so you can, I made it easier for me to get the polish in between there and they simply attach by a screw and some nuts here. Um, I did use a little bit of lacquer thinner to first take the lacquer off and then gave it a nice polish. Uh, so the case is now ready and it's really, it's a lot easier to polish once you get access to getting these things off. You can really get it all around. So what we're gonna do now is we're now gonna put the barometer movement back in. And this was kind of interesting because they have these little, these little doohickeys, or these little spacers. And each one of these just goes right on top of here. For what reason, I guess what that does, it just gets it up a little bit higher. And those go on top of there like that. Then this here lays right down on top. And this sometimes is a little tricky to do, but you get it lined up just like so. So that is in place. Now, once I put this, these screws in here, it's gonna make it a lot easier to, so that screw goes there. there. Let's see, screws are all in place. They will So the barometer mechanism is now mounted in place. And if you look here, you can see that the set screw is showing through the case. Now, if you can see there, you see it would have been impossible for me to take off those bolts. I'm sorry, put in that, that, that screw there or these nuts. That would have been impossible for me to do had I not been able to take that out. So now what we do, is we line this up. And the trick to lining this up, making sure it's on properly, you see the scale goes 28 to 31, but right in the middle is between 28, I'm sorry, between 29 and 30 is 29 and a half. We always wanna make sure that that 29 and a half lines up as you're looking at it. So as you're looking straight down, it lines up with that. So this just needs to move over a little bit. So now that's in place. Now, the next thing that we do is that this here, this, whoops, this is always a little tricky to do. You've got to line this up and put this right on top of the needle. And there's a little, there's a little hole there and it goes right on top of that pin. Do it right there. 
right. There it goes. All right. So, see, now you see on this here, now as that goes, see that nice springy action I'm getting? That's telling me that the parts are well lubricated. And, it's, and see, and every time I do it, it returns to the same spot. So that's a nice way to tech, check the effectiveness of the barometer. Now I'm gonna readjust that in a second. So it's doing the right amount. I'm gonna move this a little bit. Okay, that's lined up right. Then we put the glass on. Glass has all been cleaned. Very simple to do. One thing I like to do is actually to polish the little needle there. And this here just lays right on top. And this fits right into the case or on the case like that and it holds it in place. And the next thing that we do is we put this over and it's just a compression fit like so. And just kind of go around slowly and push it down. As you can see, go a little bit further, just push it down. Sometimes grab it a little bit like this. Just keep going around like so. You want to get it so, there it goes, it's nicely done. Now it is reading a little low. I know that the air pressure is about uh, just shy of 30. So I'm now going to put my screw into here. Just gonna adjust that so it reads close to 30. It's like 29.96 today. It's about good right there. Nice little barometer. You can see how nice that looks now. Remember when we looked at it before? Nicely polished. And you know, some people I've heard people say that I shouldn't polish brass, but I always like to uh, polish items that were initially meant to be polished. And if this would have been kept polished back in the day, then I polish it now. So uh, very nice, very nice little barometer. And um, great. Good. So thank you again for watching as we uh, service clean and put back together a barometer. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, or you can visit us on the internet at theweatherstore.com, or better yet, uh, visit us at 146 Main Street in Sandwich Village. Thank you.